Hey folks, a while ago we did a video looking at muzzle brakes and specifically the Precision Armaments muzzle brake. And that one was kind of a cool video, worked out pretty well, but there were some questions about it. And so I decided to redo some parts of the video. I'm going to be shooting once again the IWI Tavor 556. I'm going to be using Frontier, Hornady Frontier. 55 grain ammo and I've got a brand new sound meter it's a pile sound meter it's reviewed very well so I have a little bit more faith that these sound readings the decibels we're gonna see are gonna be pretty accurate I'm gonna fire five shots with this gun with this advanced armament flash hider flash hider only this is a pretty darn good flash hider, one of the best on the market, right up there with the Smith Vortex. And then I'm going to change it to the Precision Armaments muzzle brake, and we're going to shoot five more rounds and see the difference. Now the other thing I'm doing is I've got the Mantis X-10 mounted to this rifle, and we're also going to watch the recoil meter and how different it is when I'm using the flash hider versus when I'm using the muzzle brake. And lastly, we're going to do kind of a qualitative assessment. We're going to talk about my feel, my perceived recoil, how the recoil felt, what the difference was, maybe some blast to my face, those sorts of things. So let's go ahead and get started. Fire. Fire. Max was? 90.2, which is impossible. Fire. Well, I'll tell you, even with earplugs in, I got a little ringing now coming through this one. Not bad, uh, but I definitely could feel the blast in my face. But what I also noticed is I'm not seeing muzzle climb. It seems to be really flat. That's the trade-offs, of course, um, with a muzzle brake is, yeah, it breaks the recoil, but you're going to pay for it in some cases with some blast back to the face concussion, in other words. What did we get for max? 90.6. Same. No, another one was 90.1. Yeah, but that's it? It's probably erroneous. Yeah. You know, quantitatively, the muzzle brake did a fantastic job. And actually, with the feel of that muzzle brake, I definitely could tell that it, it wasn't really rising at all. However, I was feeling a tremendous amount of blast to my face that really kind of made it not so fun. And this is only a 5.56. Five, so a 5.56, five, five, it's not too fun to shoot. Um, that's not so good after all. I much uh, prefer shooting that Tavor with the flash hider. But quantitatively, as I started saying earlier, the amount of recoil as measured, every little measurement that we made indicates that the muzzle brake is the better way to go. It is superior, it beat the flash hider in all those tests. However, qualitatively, it's a whole different story. And a lot of times what I'm seeing is we've got to not rely solely or strictly on the numbers, but rather, I don't know, is it the gut feel or it's just the perception 
uh, I like this better versus that. And in this case, I like shooting that Tavor with the flash hider far more than I like shooting it, that same exact gun, with the um, muzzle brake. In fact, my son, who is standing behind me and recording the, um, well, trying to record the sound uh, differences between those two devices, he was about six feet behind me and he said he could still feel the concussion uh, from that muzzle brake, but didn't feel anything at all when I was just shooting the, uh, that, that same gun with the flash hider. So we were coming back in, discussing this whole thing, talking about how it went and, and kind of those sorts of things. And he made a good observation. And that is that, you know, maybe one, two, three shots, five shots with that gun, person can kind of take it. Uh, and, and it does. I was actually shooting better, a little bit better, with that muzzle brake. But he said, what if a person shooting a string as fast as they can, you know, 15 or 20 rounds? So I said, that's a pretty good idea. Let's head back out to the range and try it again. So we fired 15 rounds as quickly as we could. And he's much faster on the trigger than I am at a target that's 25 yards away. And I put it at 25 yards so I can, well, we can get back on target really, really quickly, very, very easily. Uh, and we're not, you know, really trying to bring that, um, that EOTech right back onto the bullseye, which would then take longer and give us longer to recover. So we purposely were, were shooting fairly close, could get back on target very, very quickly. Wanted to see that effect. Now he shot a string of his 15. At about round 11, he just took a little break. You might notice here in a little bit. Um, just because there was so much, he said, I'm just going to wait about half a second or another second or so before I fire uh, another round. Kind of disorienting is the word uh, that he used. You know, if you're into three gun, it might be a different story. But for me, and for my son, we both agree, let's stick with that flash hider. This is probably the best muzzle brake I've ever shot, no doubt about it. But hey, it's just not for me. Let's go ahead and roll that footage now and look at our shot string 15 rounds with the flash hider, 15 rounds with the muzzle brake, and see how that all plays out. Ready. Ready. We are clear. That's some blast to the face. Yeah, that was now. hurting for me too. You, you can feel it? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, okay. Well, there we have it. All the way to the left is my shooting with the flash hider. And then next is my repeat of the 15 rounds with the muzzle brake. And then is my son's shots with the flash hider followed by the same thing with the muzzle brake. In both cases, yes, the time has been reduced uh, by about two seconds by using that uh, muzzle brake. Then let's take a look at the scores. So what I did is I scored this target just like you would score essentially a bullseye target. But I also looked at how many rounds fell into the 
X into the bullseye itself. And those rounds were given um, a score of 10 points. And just outside the bull, you may have noticed, is the 9 ring. So I hit 9 of my 15 rounds inside the bull with the flash hider, 14 of my 15 rounds inside the bull with the muzzle brake. My son, when he was shooting, hit 6 of his 15 rounds in the bull, but only 2 of his rounds uh, inside the bull with the muzzle brake. We were using the Mantis X-10 again, and the score from the Mantis X-10, uh, I was getting an 80 when I was using the flash hider. I averaged 55, so my score actually dropped when I was using the muzzle brake. Uh, and that really is a lot of trigger squeeze, how much the gun is moving just before the trigger squeeze, and how you're responding to the recoil or uh, controlling, if you want to call it that, controlling the recoil. Uh, my son's Mantis X score improved uh, when he used the, the muzzle brake. Again, the times I was shaving off, we were both shaving off two, almost three seconds when we were using the muzzle brake relative to the flash hider. But I will also note that the Mantis X didn't uh, record all the rounds that were fired. In all cases, we fired 15 rounds each. It recorded 15 of my rounds the very first time, 14 rounds for my son, and then 14 of my rounds with the muzzle brake, 11 of his rounds with the muzzle brake. So there we have it. You know, the numbers show that the muzzle brake provides a great advantage. The shooter's experience, though, I still stand by. Uh, yes, this is a great muzzle brake, but I'm putting the flash hider back on this thing, and that's how it is. Hey, thanks a bunch for watching.